go to God. I'm like, like I told you in one of my other sessions, I told very clearly, you know, we always been thinking that God, I'm like, we are waiting for God to work with us. We're waiting for God to give us vision. We're waiting for God to talk to us. We're waiting for God to perform miracles. We're waiting and waiting and waiting. So, let's check what we have for today. So before we move on, let's say a small prayer. Father, Lord, thank you, Jesus, mighty God, mighty Savior, Heavenly Father, the one who created the heavens and earth, Father, Lord. We submit ourselves. Today, we're going to talk about this session. It's all about you and us, Father, Lord. Help us to build a strong relationship with you, my Lord, my Savior, so that we can hear you, believe you, and live a lifestyle of Christ, mighty Lord, mighty Savior. Every person who's listening to this message, bless it, Father. Bless their families, Father. Eradicate all the sickness. Bless them with abundance in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, Lord, speak through me, mighty Lord. Let every word which I speak be your word, Father, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Heart, hearts melt them right now. Let them understand the love of God. Let them know that you are the true source of love. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray. Amen. Right. I'm so excited to talk about today's word. Okay. We were talking about coming to God boldly. Coming to God with boldly. And now what happens when you have a strong, I'm like, you know, I was talking about, we've been waiting for God to answer. We've been waiting for God to to help us, give us visions. God, we were waiting for God to send angels. And we have this question, why God is not waiting? Why God is not looking at me? Why God is not answering my prayer? Why God is not answering my prayer? Now it's very important, my dear friends, <clears throat> that what if the God is waiting? What if the God is waiting with his eyes open and looking at the door that one day you will walk towards him? One day you come running to him and say, Father, I'm back home. What if God is waiting for you? My dear friends, I've been reading Bible from a couple of days. I was watching videos about uh, the big people and like the prophets. Like Prophet Ezekiel, Jacob, David, Abraham, Isaiah. What I've observed is that these are the people who made the first bold step to understanding the true God. These are the people who were very confidently that he is the true God who created the heavens and earth. They believe the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They believe that he is the prayer answering God. They believe that he has a 24 by 7 surveillance on you. He believe, they believe that you know, there is a divine protection wherever they go. Let it be an army. Let it be a person or a city or a country. But they are not afraid. They are so bold because the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob is a living God and is a prayer answering God. Now it's been generations and generations. We know the truth. But we're running away from it. Now in today's world, we're so-called busy every day. I'm like, trust me, we are busy. We're busy with shopping. We're busy with watching videos. We're busy, busy with work. We're busy with many other things. We're busy with everything which is made by human, which is made, which is necessary for our bodies but have you ever realized do we have the precious time for God who created the heavens and earth and created you as well do we have time to worship him do we have time to talk to him do we have time to build the cohesiveness do we have time to be in his team well, he's not talking about the 24 by 7 you need to be there but he is longing to see you and are you ready for that my dear friends today god 
telling you that. I call you my child. So you come to me with a bold heart. What do you mean by bold heart? I just want to give an example of a small kid. When a small kid runs to his father or mother. Well, let's say he is a prime minister or president or a king of a country. There will be a lot of protocols. But the kid will not worry about anything. He will run boldly to his father. Because he knows that that is his right and no one can stop him. Do you have that kind of belief and intimacy with God? Do you have that kind of a relationship with God? Because it's very, very, very important, my dear friend, that you go to God with a bold heart. And trust me, in Britain, you will get a lot of courage. In Britain, you get favor of God wherever you are. I want to talk about Jonah. He, he ran away. He ran away from the God's word, but God did pull him back. Put him on track. And God has spared this done. Jonah was upset because, oh my God, he is not fulfilling the promise. And what if I become a false prophet? Because the pro prophecy, what I've been talking for the last 40 days, is not going to come true. But the God said, These are my people I created. And if they repent, and if they repent, I would definitely forgive them. And trust me, when the king was sitting on ashes for three days, not even touching water, food, left all his royal gown, and he was sitting in ashes covering a sackcloth, that shows us the dedication. They realize that he is a true God and they should repent right now. Not just one, but like everyone in the city repented and God's heart melted. God is very slow to anger. Is filled with compassion and is the same God who blessed them will bless you as well. Today, you and me are breathing because we have not yet done with the purpose. We are not done with the purpose, what God has planned. So, let's see some verses where God talks from the Bible is that when you go to God, you need to be bold enough. And why you should be bold enough? Why? And why you should trust God? Okay. Now, let's turn the Bible to Proverbs 3 5 6. It talks about trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Now, here God is very clearly is that, you know, trust in the Lord with all heart. Well, you, you see, we talk to a loved one. We say, I love you so much. I love you 100%. I just cannot live life without you. We trust people so much. Don't we trust a God who made heavens and earth? And he said, don't lean on your own understanding. Because the understanding is not your source. Your source of understanding is God, not you. Your brains are not capable to understand the God's ways. He is the one who created the heavens and earth, created you, me, your family, your ancestors, your forefathers, and everyone. So how can a brain can understand? So he said, do not lean on your understanding when you're thinking of God. But when you're thinking something related to your work or the worldly thing, that's absolutely fine. Use your brains. Use your brains and that's how the brains is given to you. But when you're talking to God, when you're talking to his love and connecting with him, do not run your brains. He says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. It means there should not be even an ounce of doubt. And lean not on your understanding. And when you do that, when you submit and surrender, God will take you to the next level. And what happened with David? He was not a warrior. He was not a fighter. He was a shepherd. What Goliath was challenging, he went boldly because he knew that God is protecting him. He knows that God is going to drive. He knows that God is going to help. My dear friends. So, you know, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your understanding. Don't try to run your brains when you're trying to work with God. It's His ways. And no one can understand what He's thinking. He will not give you things till the time you're capable of handling things. He will not provide you everything till the time you are ready to receive it. So believe that He is watching over you. Let's turn to Bible to some other verses.
Psalms 34, 17. I love David. Trust me, what an amazing relationship he has with God. They were in love with each other. They were in love with each other. Can you beat that? He used to dance for God, sing for God, cherish. He's like, for every time, God, 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 God. Right? Amazing. He used to thank for everything. And I think he used to thank for every breath he's taking, my dear friends. Now, Psalms 34, 17 talks about the righteous cry and the Lord hears and delivers them out of all the troubles. If you are going through a temptation, the problem and everything, just cry out to Lord that I am submitting myself because enough of you been handling which you are not capable of handling. It's a God who's going to deal with it. So submit everything to him and let him handle and trust me. He will pull you out of the troubles. John 16, 33 says, The things I have spoken to you that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Now what's the darkest secret of the world? It's a death. It is a process. As someone who has taken birth would also die. But the Satan has showed that death is so dangerous, horrifying. People in those days, whether it be Noah, Abraham, Isaac, they all had a natural death. There was no scene of accidents. They grew old. In a good age, they have kids and their kids. They've seen one or two, three generations and they died. So it is a process. But in between, the Satan has made this death very horrifying. It made it emotionally disconnect from the God. It, he, as a Satan has shown the death is so painful. I'm like, look at the today's death. Accidents, murders, killed, shot, a chronic diseases. Who is living? More than 70, 80, hardly anyone. More than that, the people have a fear of death. Understand, you, you, when you have no fear of taking birth, then why you have a fear of death? Because this fear, uh, Satan is feeding on this fear, my dear friends. So, right? So God has overcome that death. And he said that it's okay. Because the minute you're going to close your eyes, or I can say the sign off from earth would be landing in Jesus' hands. Once you're out of this earth, you would be landing in Jesus' hands. My different amazing, right? So birth and death as a truth, it's a fact. Don't be horrified with the death. When you don't focus on your death, when you don't get scared. Now what happens to people when they walk, they have a fear of death. Oh my God, if someone hits me. Oh my God, if someone hurts me. Oh my God, what happens? Someone come and dash me. So there is always a fear which is developed in the mind. And there is always a fear which is running around us. The people around us are fear scared. The people around us are, you know, you, you know uh, they're bad. They, they might hit you. They might, and then you always have that fear. But there is, when you started having a fear, you remove the place of God from your mind and you fill in the fear and that is where the Satan is feeding on. But today if you think, if you try to overcome this fear, trust me, you will not fear of, you will not have a fear of death. I mean, you don't have the fear of death, you will live your life to the fullest. No matter what happens, your time comes and then you will go to him, but not before that. In the name of Jesus right now, anyone who is listening to me, I want to pray for the younger brother, I want to pray for the younger sister and everyone right now. There is no sudden death for you or your family. There's a divine protection. You will live your age in fullest and you'll meet God. But there won't be any sudden death for you and your family. You listen to me. Now this is what John 16.33 says. I want to repeat this. The things I've spoken to you that in me you might have peace. In the world you should have tribulation. But be of good cheer. And I have overcome the world. Now Isaiah 41.10 Fear you not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. Yes, I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. Psalms 9.9.10 9, 
the Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in times of trouble. And they know your name will put their trust in you. For you, the Lord, have not forsaken them that seek you. Now, when you know that the God is completely blessing you, the God is completely focusing on you, he wants you to come to him with a bold heart. He wants him to walk up to him with a bold heart because he be so happy to see his child back home. What happened with the prodigal son? When the prodigal son was back, the father forget everything. He has forgiven the kid and he welcomed with the arm stretch. He welcomed the warm welcome and he said, my son is back. Same way. The story is all about enough of you running around in the world. It's a time to get back to father. A lot of things to get back to father, they think they're dying. No, I'm not talking about dying here. I'm talking about get back to father to build a relation with him. Get back and fall in love with your father. Recognize him. Fall in love with him. And that is how you would be connected to your Lord. And when you're going to go back to Lord, you have your blessings. Because you have a divine protection in the back of you. You'll have angels working for you. You have angels going ahead of you and clearing the way for you. You're going for an interview. The angels would work out for you. You're going for a drive, the angels would work out for you. There's nothing which is going to dash you or your car or your vehicle. God's protection will be 24 by 7, provided are you connected to Him? Are you obeying Him? Do you love Him? It's simple, my dear friends. When you love someone, you'll never hurt that person. You cry out to the God, you're hurting me because you're not listening to me. You know, I lost this, I lost that. And you would cry and you complain, God, why are you not answering my prayer? Are you, can't you see? But let me tell you, what if the God is waiting for you to come back? What if the God is sitting there and crying for you because you are not turning yourself to him? What if the God is crying aloud and saying that my son come back, my daughter come back? And what if he's in pain? And the best way to make your Lord happy is that go back to Him. It's a time for you to pick up your bags. Go back to Him. And He's waiting. And I'm sure He would welcome you. He will not just welcome you, but He's going to welcome you royally. Go with a bold heart to God. And to have a bold heart, what should we do? We should listen to the word more. The more you listen, more you believe. More you believe, more faith you have. More faith you have, a strong relation you build. When you have a strong relation, you would talk to each other. It will be a conversation. And you would live a lifestyle of Christ. Abraham is to talk to God. His best friend. David is to talk to God. Isaiah is to talk to God. Daniel is to talk to God. What is that you waiting for? It's a time for you to pull up your socks. Call upon the God who made the heavens and earth for you, my dear friend. And I'm sure he is waiting for you. God loves you. Go with a bold heart to him. Call him with a bold heart. Tell him, Father, take care of me. It's your responsibility to take care of me. I am your son. I'm going to sit back. And I'm not going to worry about anything because my father is there. And he is my protection. He is my refuge. Build that confidence. And I'm sure you'll have a great day. Let's say a small prayer. Thank you, my Lord. Thank you, Father. God. Thank you for this amazing time you've given. The words which you've spoken through me, Father. Let them inspire people. That we all have a strong relationship with you, mighty Lord. That we all come to you with a bold heart, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, eradicate every demonic forces. The spirit of fear. The spirit of pain. The spirit of rejection. The spirit of crying in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth to be avoided right now. Throw them into the deep sea and never come back. And we raise our hands, we raise our life to worship you in the bold heart, Father. Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen, amen.